welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about uh, another important antimicrobial enzyme that is present in the saliva in the last video i've told you that the uh, important antimicrobial enzyme that are found in the saliva includes the lysozyme the salivary lactoperoxidase and the lactoferrin and we discussed the functions of the lysozyme and salivary lactoperoxidase in the previous video. I've told you that lysozymes, they are also known as the muramidase or the N-acetyl muramide glycan hydrolase and they are an important component of the immune system. Uh, what the lysozyme do is they are going to break the uh, beta 1,4 linkages that are present between the NAG and the name of the uh, sugar backbone and when they uh, hydrolyze the beta 1,4 linkages that actually leads to the uh, uh, that actually compromise the integrity of the cell wall thereby causing the lysis of the bacteria. Then we talked about the uh, salivary lactoperoxidase and I've told you that uh, when the hydrogen peroxide which is usually produced by the reaction of the glycose and the oxygen in the presence of the enzyme glucose oxidase uh, the hydrogen peroxide that is produced the lactoperoxidase cat catalyzes the uh, oxidation of hydro uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, of several acceptor molecules and the uh, important uh, the important example that we discussed that were the uh, production of the hypothiocyanide the hypobromide and the hypoiodide and these short uh, oxidized intermediates and they had a potent bactericide effect. Now in this particular video I want to focus on the function of uh, the lactoferrin which is another important uh, antimicrobial enzyme found in the uh, saliva. Now if you talk about the lactoferrin uh, it is also known as the lactotransferrin and the lactoferrin or the lactotransferrin that is a multifunctional protein of the transferrin family. Now the lactoferrin it is a globular glycoprotein. The globular is referring to the shape of this particular protein that this protein is globular in nature. The glycoprotein means that when this protein it is synthesized it goes through the post translational modification and carbohydrate moieties that are added to this particular protein therefore that is known as glycoprotein so lactoferrin is a global glycoprotein with a molecular mass of 80 kilodaltons now this lactoferrin uh, it is present in various secretory fluids in the human body uh, for example the uh, saliva contains the lactoferrin the milk and the tears and the secretions of the uh, nasal the nasal secretions they also contain the uh, lactoferrin and these uh, lactoferrin they are actually produced by specialized SNR cells which are known as the serous cells as I've told you in the uh, first video of this series that the SNR cells and these are the secretory cells and they are of two types one of them is the serous cells so the uh, lactoferrin they are actually produced by the serous cells if you talk about the uh, lactoferrin, uh, its highest concentration, it is found in the human colostrum. Uh, the human colostrum is also known as the first milk and it is uh, the, uh, the concentration that is highest in the colostrum followed by the human milk and then in the uh, cow milk. Now what happens is that the uh, lactoferrin it is actually a component of the innate immune system which is not, you can say, uh, a general immune system that is found in human bodies. And the uh, lactoferrin, it actually have the bactericidal and fungicidal activity, mainly at the mucosis. Uh, by mucosis, I mean that the uh, linings of the uh, internal organs. So the lactoferrin, they play an important uh, bactericide and fungicide uh, at the uh, mucosis. Now this lactoferrin, uh, it provides antibacterial activity to the human infants because when the infants they are born, they have got a weak immune system. So the lactoferrin as I've told you that its highest concentration is found in the human colostrum and when the infant take that human colostrum, it contains the lactoferrin which provide uh, antibacterial activity to the uh, human infants thereby protecting the infection uh, of the infants uh, by the bacteria. Now how this uh, lactoferrin works, if you uh, look at the uh, structure of the lactoferrin, it have got positively charged clusters 
uh, at its N terminal region of the N loop. At, so at the N terminal region, which contain the N loop, there is a positively charged cluster and that positively charged clusters that interact with the uh, anionic part of the lipopolysaccharide. Now this uh, lipopolysaccharide that is actually a, a component of the outer membrane of the gram-negative bacteria and it contains a specialized lipid which is known as the lipid A. Now this lipid A it have got an uh, anionic charge or it, it, it have got a negative charge. So the positively charged cluster that is going to interact with the negatively charged lipid A of the polysaccharide and when uh, and during this interaction the positively charged clusters and the interaction of the lipid A it actually damages the uh, lipopolysaccharide and when it damages the lipopolysaccharide thereby the membrane that is damaged the permeability that is altered and thereby the HPS that is released. So if you uh, damage the, the outer covering of the, uh, the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria, it usually have a damaging effect on those particular bacteria and they are no more able to survive. That means that the uh, lactophidin is actually a, a bactericidal enzyme. Now, uh, this is one mechanism, but it has been suggested that the uh, lactophilin, it binds the calcium, one of the important components of the lipopolysaccharide, and when the uh, LF or the uh, lactophilin, it binds the calcium, uh, it uh, either uh, displace or chelate this uh, divalent cations from the LPS, and when this uh, divalent cation is displaced, or it is chelated by the uh, lactophilin, it causes the release of the L LPS, thereby having a uh, bactericidal activity. Now this uh, lactophilin have got uh, important clinical applications as well. Uh, for example, in uh, one of this one of the study, it reported that the oral administration of the physiological concentration of bovine lactophilin it actually prevented the biofilm formation of the uh, four Phyromonas gengivalis and the uh, Prevotella intermedia, the important bacteria responsible for causing the uh, chronic periodontitis. So when these bacteria, they make the biofilm, thereby they are causing this particular chronic periodontitis disease. The LF, what it do is that the uh, lactophilin is going to prevent the biofilm formation and it also uh, reduced the established biofilms of these two bacteria. So if the lactophilin can prevent the biofilm formation and it can reduce the established biofilm formation, it can actually treat the uh, uh, chronic periodontitis. So this is one of the uh, clinical applications of the uh, lactophilin. Now, another important uh, clinical application of the uh, lactophilin is that in chronic wounds, the uh, treatment with a combination of lactophilin and xylitol that were responsible for disruption of the biofilm and perme permeabilization of the uh, bacterial membrane. So if, if they have the ability to disrupt the biofilms or if they can cause the uh, permeabilization of the bacterial membrane, that means that the bacteria will not be able to survive. So uh, these are the important antimicrobial enzymes that are present in the saliva, the lysozymes, the salivary lactoper oxidase and the lactophilin. Beside these enzymes, there are also antibodies present in the uh, saliva and in the other body secretions. So if you talk about the uh, important um, uh, antibody that is present in the saliva, that is the immunoglobulin A. Now this immunoglobulin A, it is an antibody and it plays a crucial role in the uh, immune functions at the uh, mucous membranes or at the mucosas. So the immunoglobulin, again, they are playing a very important immune system function at the mucous membranes. Now, the, uh, if you talk about the concentration of the immunoglobulin, it is the uh, highly produced antibody with respect to the mucosal membrane than all other types of the antibody combined. So this is the highly produced uh, immunoglobulin uh, in the uh, mucosal membranes. And when you talk about the body secretions, uh, the immunoglobulin usually exists in two forms. One is the non-secretory and the other one is the secretory immunoglobulin A. 
So the secretory immunoglobulin A for short that is known as S immunoglobulin A. This is one of the main uh, immunoglobulin that is found in uh, many secretions including the saliva, uh, tears, the sweat and the human colostrum, the first milk. Now, what these uh, secretory um, uh, antibodies, the secretory antibody A do is that it is going to uh, damage or it is going to act as uh, antibacterial or antimicrobial functions at the, uh, in, in the, uh, in the uh, oral cavity or in the, uh, you can say, uh, mucous membranes, mucosal membranes. Now, the uh, secretory IgA it have the ability to survive the harsh gastrointestinal tract environment and if it can survive the harsh gastrointestinal environment, it means that it provides protection against microbes that multiply in body secretions. So the immunoglobulin A, they are actually providing immune functions at the mucosus, mucous membranes, the mucosal membranes, and it provides protection against the microbes that multiply in body secretions. So if you like the video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with your friends.